Okay, so we're back to this intro video. So we're almost getting to an end using this geometry, then we're going to change to new geometry. So otherwise you're going to become a expert just working in this one, but I hope you're getting the gist of all the options available. So in this one, we're going to, to work in boundary layer advanced options and to clarify a few things and to show you how to generate, how to control boundary layer. So here I already have a surface mesh. Okay. So you also can generate the same case. Look at that. I separated my geometry here. I have a small pipe here. This is a small section, but otherwise it's exactly this area as we have done so far. So to generate the boundary layer, remember we have a steps here. You can see, save the surface mesh. And after you have the surface mesh, you go boundary layer, which is this step. So let me open all the advanced options, global, local. Here you can set up everything, but for some reason I prefer to, to have this section here. Okay, I prefer to control everything here. So basically to grow the boundary layer, you need to enable that in the walls. Okay. So if, for instance, in this case, as we have everything separated in different patches, I can select to grow boundary layer in different volumes or in the whole volume. Remember that you can have uh, more than one volume, we already work it. But so in the case that you had here two volumes, you select the volume and just grow this wall in that one or select all the volumes. Okay. So it's very selective. Uh, so I prefer to set up everything here. So just to show you, I will grow the boundary layer in wall one and wall two. So first things prison. Okay. You can do the same stuff here. Uh, also to make it clear is you do it here. Always remember to press here, apply. Okay. Here, everything is done automatically. So you enable here and you enable the here. So we're using the volume to grow that one. All the volumes is you want, if you want to go selective would be better to the, to do it here, but here one volume we have. And now you just grow the, bo the boundary layer. So we have, we're going to use first global parameters. Okay. So one, two, three, or let me use just three layers and to generate the boundary layer, just click there and that's all. Okay. So we go here as you saw the click plans. Also, let me, okay. Uh, here, 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 and there you go. A nice boundary layer in the walls we selected. Okay. And let me go here. For instance, I would like to save this view so you can rotate and then go back, double click and you go back. Okay. So see that nice boundary layer. Okay. And to point out, we didn't put any option. Okay. So it works. It works very well. You can have very complicated geometries and something like this one to stretch again, that it's sensitive to geometry, but just to talk about why it can be complicated here for this boundary layer. So look at that. We have right angles, acute angles, obtuse angles. Okay. So this boundary layer will grow in a different way. So from here, look at that is wrapping in this way. So this can change the quality very rapidly. Okay. So they may excuse this is the effect one there also orthogonality, but the most effective one is excuses and see here instead in this one is very smooth transition. So in this small section, so a lot of happening here and here see that is growing a right angle, very easy. But now later we're going to do also the boundary layer here. And now I'm going to talk to the open phone community. So probably you have realized sometimes when you have boundary layers like this, that you grow here, there are some problems and probably there is some back quality cells propagating. So we're going to see things here because it's very similar. Okay. So when dealing with instructor meshes, there are many things that are tricky to control. You need to be careful about that. If you were using, uh, instructor meshes, there is no problem. Perfect meshes all the time, but creating that, that block topology can be tricky. So quite easy. Let me redo again. So if I want, I can increase to eight there. Let me redo the mesh. Remember, you can save the steps here. It's inexpensive to redo the mesh, but it's, it, it is, if it is expensive to do the surface meshes, reopen the case. Click here again. In the message window, you have everything. If you don't have the meshes window, remember, right click here in the ribbon, and then you can select what you want to do. See? <coughs> okay, sorry about that. And you enable <coughs> options there. So now we open the cut plane again, put there, put there, and voila, you go. 
you have your nice boundary layer. But look at what is happening here. That is growing with selected eight, if I would recall. Let me go here. A minimum. But actually, we don't get all those eight. Sometimes, see that some, some cells are, are, are delete. So this is called you know, the approach. First, remember, this is a pre-BL, okay, meaning that you grow the boundary layer before generating the volume, volume mesh. In open phone, it is a post BL. You generate the boundary layer, the, the volume mesh, and then you grow the boundary layer. So each one have advantages that disadvantage. I'm not going to talk about that, but probably later you can compare and see which one is better, but pretty much you can control everything bus method. Personally speaking, probably I prefer this one, but okay. I'm not going to talk about that. So see that sometimes some cells disappear and they do disappear because you need to enforce or the method is enforcing some quality metrics. So in this method that we're using, the, it's called the stair step, you erase cells when your, that quality metric cannot be reached. Okay, so in this case, it is erasing cells because it is very difficult to, to generate the mesh that fulfill that quality metric. So I would like, I like to call that you know, the impossible mesh. So because sometimes you, you enforce some quality metric, but it's impossible to get that mesh. So the method, according to the auctions that you have available, may erase on cells. So let me count here. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and here you have six. So it didn't generate all the eights. So it can be several reasons, quality, or because you are too close to the other. Okay, so just to also keep that transition that we're using the growth rate by default is 1.2 that here is called height right ratio, and then you have the height, the first cell size is <clears throat> we're doing that. Okay, then the quality matrix here, you go to meshing, you have your global, you go below here, you have boundary layer. And this is how you control these three parameters are more than enough to control the quality of the whole mesh. So just to show you the other approach. So this is a stir step. And as you enable this auto reduction, it will be, it will be something, well, you're going to see what is called compression. Instead of erasing, it's going to compress the mesh. Maybe it's going to erase some other cells. Okay, so, some cells, but the idea will compress everything. So let's see what happens with the other method. Okay, you grow your boundary layer. So you ha we have here a lot of flexibility how to control things. And up to you. So see that now it grew all the boundary layers and see kind of if compressing just to put it there. Sometimes the impossible mesh, okay? You cannot generate it and it will erase, okay? So don't be fooled that here you say, okay, you are growing the whole boundary layer. This is the one because sometimes it's not true, okay? And probably visually you can check, you know, you can see that you compare this one with the other. The other one is a much better one, okay? So it's up to you to choose one. Honestly, I recommend you to go to disable this option, okay? So you go for the stair steppings and let me go here just to compare both. Let me put this tool and take on a sc screenshot here and let me go again here, okay? And then grow the boundary layer. And if I put the coupling there, there you go. Okay, so see the difference there. Okay, so this since you now the first criterion that I mentioned, what is a good mesh is to have to be pleasant to the eye. This is more pleasant to the eye, at least for me. So one thing that this is to generate a boundary layer. So this bottom f works with the topology and string wrap. So far, it doesn't work with the op three auction. Now this is still experimental. Eventually, it will work, but it's just in these two methods it is implemented. So easy peasy, okay? As you see, we didn't do anything. We don't have to think. So the big question is, some people say, okay, you have a first layer sickness here. What is the height used here? So by default, if you don't give anything, okay, what is going to do the method is that it will take no this edge size here, the characteristic edge size that you have in your surface, and the first cell center will be approximately, roughly speaking, 0, 0 0.2 times. Okay, since this edge size is 1, this will be 0 0.2. Okay, and let's look at our parameters, because our edge size here is something, let me force everything to 0. Okay, let me redo everything, and just to prove that. 
0 0.02 and 0 0.0 well probably is a little bit low let's use 0 0.04 and 0 0.04 so now all over the surface it will be 0 0.04 so when we grow that boundary layer okay it will be 0 0.008 roughly speaking okay so you have your surface mesh you don't put anything so this is the lazy approach that you want to do. you don't want to think okay and you put here let's say you say i recommend to put six and it will grow everything so you say you do this and you're thinking about wall functions and it will work okay with no problem and you get an idea that fair cell cell center depends in the other also in the surface triangulation so as you have and it's a tropic surface meshes or very small triangles, you will see the variation. Okay, let me put this coupling here. Okay, now I need to grow. Okay, I forgot to grow the boundary layer there. And again, here, 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 and there you go. So see that? We have a very nice boundary layer. So the smaller you make it, the better. Now the more uniform it is, it doesn't collide with the other one. Okay, so let's measure since here. Okay, we can measure. Okay, so be careful that here we have the surface mesh there. So I can measure here. You have the tool to measure since. So as you click here, you're going to mesh. You are measuring the surface mesh. So we need to hide, hide it there. And then we access this one. So. You click here, it's going to pin automatically that node and see that 0 0.08, roughly speaking. And here, you can click here and here and you have the height. Okay, so here it's going to grow. So see that automatically is taken 0 0.02, okay, or something like that, roughly speaking, okay. Well, here we stop at 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0 0.02. And then this is 0 0.008, roughly speaking. Okay, so 20% of the surface height. But this one we have a, a max size of 0 0.04. So in theory, should should get closer to that. But why is not getting closer? Because we stop it. So we have a criterion. First cell, 20, if you don't define anything, the first cell height it will be 20, 0 0.2. Sorry, of the characteristics edge here and then it will grow until reaching the maximum number of layer or until reaching the maximum size. In this case, it is stopped automatically here because it reached this con condition. So what I usually do is I, I like to put there a large value, usually 20, and it will grow automatically. So it's, it is not going to grow, I know in this case, 20 layers because it's going to reach this value fast sometimes if you choose if you use a very low value it might reach but most of the time and as i said the lazy approach you don't want to play with this option so go here okay put 20 layers do not put any option there and you are going to grow a good boundary layer okay so i need to generate first here surface boundary layer So already see it takes a little bit longer, set plane, and there you go. So we are growing the boundary layer, okay? And this is it, okay? 20 cells automatically is stopping according to some criteria. So see that here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It didn't generate eight because likely already had reached that transition. So as you go and measure, so you always hide that one there, this one. It will be something close to not 0 0.04. Remember that it's growing by a 20% change in volume. So the next one would be something like 0, 0, 0, 0, 30 something, and then it goes to the maximum larger value. Okay, so that is what is happening. Okay, very easy to control as you see. Okay, you need to get out, lost into infinite auctions. Okay, just put those values there. And remember, you can put here into the any large value, okay, but it will stop when you reach, usually you reach the maximum cell size using the default transition, which is 1.2, okay, your default transition, okay, is 
the growth rate. Okay, so this is this approach uh, since are very easy. Okay, it seems very easy, but I will make things complicated later. And then the other approach that you can use. And by the way, let me show you that. For instance, let me switch off boundary layer there. So now I'm not going to get grow it there. And I go here. I put my use my user is suspect there, the cut plane. And there you go. Just grow your boundary layer there. Okay, so quite easy to control and also you can have different options. So it's not recommended, but sometimes it might happen you have walls that are too close. For instance, imagine that if these walls were too close, probably it's not a good idea to grow eight or 10. You can grow three and then in the other regions where you have more space, you grow more. Okay, so let's do like this. Okay, and the main reason why it's not recommended, it can, it's, there is no problem, but if you don't need it, don't do it, because what will happen is that in an intersection, here you will see that, okay, let's go here, and okay, let me hide here, and let's smell the colors. Okay, so see what happens here is that here will grow, but then you have this mismatch. Okay, and sometimes this mismatch can be large. And most of the time in the mismatch that you have between different measures is where you are going to have bad quality cells. So let me put here three, probably we're going to see it better. No, that was smoothing. Okay, by the way, all when you generate, when you grow the boundary layer, the meshing tool also is modifying, can modify the surface mesh also to improve the quality, okay? It's not fixed. It will modify the surface boundary layer to make it better. So at any time you can improve there, you can freeze the boundary layers, you don't want to improve or to improve it, or you can apply a smoothen, okay, to improve the quality. The quality is kind of a location smoothing, okay? I don't want to go into details, but it's just, swapping or relaxing the position of some nodes and so on. So you see that three layers and likely here's where you can get some problems, no mesh quality, but very selective, quite easy to control. Okay. So let's go back here and, okay, so I hope you have, the, this is the first method. And just to recapitulate, the first cell center will be 0 0.2, the surface dimension, and then it will grow until region the maximum number of layer or the maximum size, whatever you reach first, and you can grow it in different volumes. So in this case, we have one volume, but you can have two volumes and select where to grow. So now let's say that I want to, to have the, I want to fix my first cell height. Okay, so usually, okay, going to estimate in Y plus and so on, you can have an idea. So let me put here 0 0.02. Okay, so quite small value. 0.002, so previously it was 008, so <clears throat> factor of three, and now let's do everything. So it will work exactly in the same way, but now I'm fixing this first cell height. So the previous method, as it is 0 0.2, the surface mesh, and if you have different cell size, it will change, okay? It will be relative to the surface mesh. In this case, it doesn't matter if your surface mesh, you have different uh, triangulation size I mentioned, it's already fixed to this value, okay? So I go here. Okay, it takes a little bit longer because it's growing more layers and checking the way match quality, so I'll put it there, and this is it. Okay, now we have this 002 all around your surface, and a very, very nice mesh, and look at that, it's growing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 layers, okay? Even if you put cert, it's growing 14 layers. First let's le le uh, cell center here, or first cell uh, prison height, this one, and then grow the boundary layer until reach a maximum number of layers or maximum size. In this case, it's maximum size that you are reaching. It's not precisely this size. It will be something smaller because you are growing using NOAA progression. In this case, 1.2 or the next cell, the volume or the height will be approximately 20% 20, 20 larger than the other, okay? 
than this one is smaller than the next one and that can be those are relatively easy like, not properly in a linear linear progression but yeah something like that so it can be estimated quite easily so very nice measures and this is the stuff that you cannot generate with with the snappy x mesh okay not even as you recall this tutorial now we work also that this tutorial and usually you have problems here now when you have large excuseness that we have here the excuseness is, is large so then you can check now the mesh quality here so you can go and let me check excuseness it's not large but there and actually we have some out of range more, more than four so ideally the maximum value you know it's four and let's recall you click here you select what you want to see click there show and it's going to show you where you do you have those back quality cells okay so see that you can rotate there and we have it there so those cells there let me move here and you can access that new new group here okay so you can hide on hide you can hide your cut plane and you have everything there so as expected here where you have you know this angle large angle where it's changing you now from this direction to this direction you have the large excuseness and excuseness remembers the deviation okay so we go back to the finite volume method actually you want to interpolate your solution in the face center okay here but you have the cell centers and actually the vector connecting two cell centers okay and let me draw that just you can see that better let me go here so ideally we want to interpolate somewhere here in the center of the face okay let me uh, here no, here in the center of the face connecting to two cells but we have the cell center here and here, but in reality, okay, we have this vector connecting these two cent centers is here. So you have this deviation here. Okay, so this is excuseness, okay? So usually large values in this case, four, four corresponds to this deviation. So it's the distance that you have here from here. So it, it's on dependence on applications normalize the value between zero and one, some others computing in another way using some weight functions, but this is the excuseness. The okay. So just to talk about because OpenFone also suffers a lot of this excuseness. And let me redo this mesh and let me put this one 0 0.5 a little bit larger. Okay. And let me grow no more than 10 okay and just to see when we can reduce or how can we reduce that excuse so so far you see that it's quite easy okay it's like the previous method the one the, the laser approach but here now you can define your height okay you can also play with the height ratio height ratio by default is 1.2 but you can put here 1.3 okay and you can have it different you know? so this is how the transition between the small and the larger cells, no contiguous cells, okay? The change, let's say, in volume, okay? So usually 1.2 is more than enough, okay? It's 20% and change in ratio, okay? But you can all change it there. Okay, so now we have there, I don't recall if I generate, okay, I put it there, here, and this is it what we have okay and i forgot what i wanted to say okay excuses okay so i'll see that quite nice mesh perfect we're using this third step method i recommend that one when you are not reaching some the, the quality impulse here this quality metrics uh it will erase cells and let's see how we can reduce this excuseness okay you have access to excuseness oh sorry we were looking at non-orthogonality i know excuseness okay and then also we can check all is orthogonality and then this is measured in degrees and then you have quality this is the quality metric okay so this is kind of a uh, a relation between excuseness orthogonality volume and so on to get a quality parameter so one is perfect cells and close to zero one get it gets a little bit ugly and let's say standard practice is to have the the the, the this quality parameter more than 0 0.05 let's say okay 
that is very good measures less than 0.05 is probably to play a little bit more you no know, changing parameters but to reduce this one and we see that this is the deviation we have this cell center here it is very intuitive that if you use a smaller mesh likely this skewness will be smaller so let's check what are the largest values so if i click here it show so i know it will be very large there and you see that the values contain it between three five and four i have it there so what will happen if i make a finer surface mesh just to move so the idea is moving the cell center closer to the face okay and keeping this height you no know, cons uh, fixed okay so you put the other method the relative okay the height will be smaller so you are not going in, no, you are not going to do anything okay you are going to keep that error so in this case i'm fi fixing the height so that is an advantage so let's go and use okay a force all over the surface 0 0.2 so in theory i should have my excuses by a factor of two okay not necessarily but let's see so I should have something here. Uh, let me take a photo. Okay, so this step here, okay. I didn't take it fast enough. And let me generate grow the boundary layer. So you saw there that it was a little bit more time consuming this surface mesh because much smaller elements. So very complicated geometry, the, the surface mesh can be time consuming. Not in the other hours, so it probably depends, but probably not very complex stuff in my experience five minutes so later we're going to do way more complex geometries so we get out of this bowl of the pipe okay so you can realize that it's taking more time okay put my cut plane there struck cells okay and now if I go here, I already see that that deviation is less and probably yeah, it's like two. Okay, it's a center or we can take this out here, one, two. So you see that previously we have stuff about four. Now we have stuff about three and two. Okay, as expected. So let me extract this cells. And you can do multiple selections, by the way. There you have it. Okay, so see that where we were expecting the cells, we have all those bad quality cells. And I was saying that multiple selection, and let me open that window. Uh, this one also be careful now because you, you're putting a lot of information on the screen that sometimes it might crash. Okay, as you start to visualize a lot of stuff. So be careful about that. You press control and you can do multiple selections. Okay. And let's see these two sets where I'm expecting to have all the bad quality set, but not bad quality, they are still okay, but the ones with the largest excuses. And see that after this selection, we have those cells contained. Well, this is one of the cells, or I don't know if I'm plotting everything. Okay, oh, okay, just 2.5 2 and 3. Okay, let me go, I probably deselect the other. And also this step can be time consuming you know, as you have meshes very large, I don't know, 10 million cells. When you click there, it is going to compute everything so it can take some time, okay? So this and this, okay. <coughs> In this case, it's something 1.4 million and you, you can realize that it's taking some time. So see that now we're grouping everything. And as expected, we have all the cells there. Just to mention also, you can you can search for those cells. So you right click, find cells, and you can next, next, and you can see where you have those faces is highlighted. Also be careful here, you have large meshes, it, it can it can crash. So something that is it good, it can get everything can can get a little bit heavy the, the graphical interface. So this is how you control and you can improve the mesh quality. So Speaking to the open phone community uh, again, this is a very common problem that you have and you, you have realized that also when you have these angles there, it's always there, it, it is collapsing. So in open phone, it's very difficult to fix that problem because the method that used by Snappy Xmas, you use a, a quads in the surface or using them mostly quads and quads, they degenerate really fast, okay? 
So that is one of the other issues. Why it's better to use triangles or polyhedron, polyhedron because they can adapt very easily to any shape. Okay, triangle is the best one. Then you have the poly, okay, and then you have the quads. And quads they generate they generate really fast, and that's why you have all those problems there with the quads. Okay, so I hope this was clear, and but we're not done yet. So let's go back and let me put here. 0 0.5 the maximum here I can leave it 0 1 let me generate this surface mesh again and this is what we have no now we're controlling okay so probably 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 okay let me go wall one and let me change wall one let me put in wall one zero one okay just to show you that now we have different <coughs> dimensions cell dimension in the surface okay and let me go here and to show you what will happen here in wall one if i put it relative okay so just to make it clear so in one i leave it relative so it's relative to this dimension in the other is fixed okay so the first layer should be a fixed value okay so also you might be familiar a little bit with open from those section axial relative and, and so on so as you see here, it's way much easier to control. Okay, the fact that we are not using X has also led us to get way much better uh, prismatic layers. And as expected, and as I told you here, is fixed distance and see here that this height is changing according to the cell next to, in, in, in the surface and it's 0 0.2 0.2 times you now that characteristic size. Okay, so this is how to get your way around generating boundary layers. As you see, it's not very difficult, okay? And I gave you a few tips. I, said, I recommend you to stay with the stair step, okay? Probably if you don't know anything about your mesh, you can go with the relative sizes that it usually works well for wall, wall functions. It's 90% of the time I get good results and then if you, you want to go wall resolving yes fix your height and then you can start to put large I usually put large values here now because I know that you are never is rarely when you grow 30 or 50 layers okay always it will stop always first when you reach the maximum value okay be careful also if you have walls that are too close okay don't let this <clears throat> this boundary layer close to close to the other wall because that can create mesh quality problems and mainly the problem is and let me show you is that you don't have too much space to fit cells volume cells in between okay even if the, met the method is going to try to avoid those situations you are not going to have too much space there and that will create low quality meshes so if I put this here, and that was what I was telling you. So see that here, there is not much space. If you look at the background mesh, the surface mesh, likely three, four or three cells, that which is not much, okay? So do not let it grow too close, okay? So here you see that you have it now, it's enough space. Okay, so we are not done yet, okay? Now let's complicate a little bit this case. So we went through this, uh, just to mention also about well, aspect ratio, I think. Let me put here, for instance, this one, if you put a large value, 1.8, and in this one, a low value, 1.1, that also will have an influence. So here now it's going to grow really fast to the last, uh, to the maximum volume. So probably it's going to grow three or four layers instead here is going to grow is lower so likely it's going to grow more layers so let's see this effect these two auctions are related to something maybe i will comment a little bit to something else maybe we will comment something later maybe not for the moment we're not interested in that okay so my useful plane there. And there you go. As I told you here, large aspect rate here, or growth rate or uniformity, whatever you want to call it, call it, it will grow fast until reaching the maximum 
volume not the maximum the one that is less than 20 percent that you're putting here or, or no here no it's not 20 percent 80 percent okay and then it will stop and here you put it smaller and see that it's growing more layers as you are using the metal stir stepping here it's also erasing back quality cells such a way that you can have good meshes this way to grow it until the last layer now here it is if i would recall uh, snappy x meshes final layer thickness first layer thickness total thickness so there you have like four or five options in snappy x mesh okay that can be very difficult to control here just in these parameters, these two parameters, we control everything. And you can get the estimate of the total thickness if you need, if you want to generate a boundary layer with total thickness. Honestly, I don't see situations where to do that. I haven't done, but it might happen, but it can be estimated really easy. I'm not going to details that probably later. In the, I can show some equations on how to get that progression. So let's go back here. 1.2, the standard method. So everything is standard and what i wanted to show you that to reduce excuse and we saw that you make this the surface mesh okay it's smaller to control that or you can make the the, the also the boundary layer uh larger but it's not the the point but also instead of making everything smaller the surface that is expensive you can concentrate cells here okay in this edge okay there in the geometry we have an edge and recall at the beginning also we, we mentioned that triangles they, they they have the tendency to adapt much better to cool to to high curvatures to 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 this to geometries difficult geometry instead quads they generate they generate really fast but in the other spectrum quads when you have boundary layers quads rectangles prison they can squeeze okay so they are going to get large aspect ratio which is the uh, now this is growth rate uh, aspect ratio we have another option max aspect ratio and they can fit very well the boundary layer okay so if you try to do the boundary layers using triangle if you try to get the same aspect ratio the quality of the triangles or polyhedra also they generate very fast okay instead if you the other way is to use very small triangles okay to resolve those boundary layer and it will become very very expensive and we're going to see that in what i'm going to show you okay so let me go here to the mesh okay see and i want to select the edge i press the key e and you have it there right click and see that you have this option so this is a very nice option. I really like what you have here. So I want you just to set for the moment the edge parameter. And let me put there 0, 1. Then you have these options. So you can set also the number of nodes, whatever you want, or the dimension or number of nodes, a spacing. So see that there you have this start point where this curve, this is a parametrical curve, and it's a starting somewhere. It's in the in the other side you have that starting point. So here you can this will be the clustering, how it cluster towards one end or bunching sometimes, it's called bunching parameters and growth rate also how it grows. In this case, for this parametrization that we have here, this geometry, I think they don't have an influence, you don't see it, but let's see what happens, okay? You can play with those options, right? So see that I put that, that triangulation only there, and there you go. So in theory, okay, now you can control everything here so by, by the excuseness can be controlled like this so we make it smaller so unlikely it's going to be smaller there okay however okay this implies that you need more triangles here more cells in this mesh okay if you use triangles for the boundary layer so if you squeeze their quads much better and i will going to illustrate that later to show you the other option so let me go there boundary layer put my cut plane there and there you go okay so now just by having control in that edge we reduce the skewness way more than the previous case okay so that is another way 
to control excuseness. So it's up to you. Sometimes it's not always the best solution. Sometimes it improves. Sometimes it will change something. But you can play. Likely most of the time it will work. Okay, I have to be honest there. But it's not always the that silver bullet, that solution. Okay, so we have this. Okay, and I want to show you the other option. Let me close there. Okay, to show you something else, another technique that I really like. This is more advanced. So we need to advance uh, uh, to, uh, to access again this edge. And just to show you the edge, this edge is starting. Let me rotate it. Let me right click. There is a point there. I rotate it, and as you set set it here. See that you have the starting point somewhere there. So this is where you're going to cluster cells and so on. But uh, these objects that in this case don't have an influence here for whatever reason. But it's interesting is this. Let me put this option. So now look at that. Starting from this edge, I can grow prismatic layers or quads. Okay, where in, in a 2D in a surface. So if I put a value there that generally speaking needs to be or need, must be a lower value than the max size. Okay, it's kind of like growing the boundary layer. And let me put 0, 0.5 there. Okay, and let me come here. Okay, and first let me show you something. You have this option here, global parameter. If I choose all triangles, the method it will always force to have a triangulation. Okay, if you disable this, okay, now the method it will detect out can detect automatically regions where it can fit its quads or regions where you are forcing those quads okay like in this case that uh, if i click there and let's see there what is happening really cool this and you can get an idea what is happening here now for instance let me rotate like this imagine that if you are using there in this case, and why in some occasions it's better to control that? Imagine that you have a fillet there, like this. If you want to resolve this fillet with triangles, this curvature, because there is curvature there, you need really small triangles. Instead, by using this method, and let me, okay, ta -ta -ta -ta. instead, by using this method, I can put quads that with large aspect ratio. So I can put a quad with this aspect ratio, like in the boundary layers, that it will resolve all that Philip there. Instead, if you want to resolve this with triangles, with this, certain, this same resolution, you need to go like this. Imagine that now you grow all those triangles here. It is a lot of triangles that you put there in the surface. Now imagine you grow that in the volume. It's a lot. Now imagine that those needs to convert it to prison and you are going to have problem with quality. So there are very specific situations that you will like to grow a method like this. Uh, if you use the full options, Enova automatically will detect regions where you can grow. So sometimes you might you, you don't want to have that. And if you want to disable everything, force triangle. But if you want to see what Enova is proposing, just leave it. So if I think, if I recall, well, probably if I put here 0, 5, maybe we'll grow those quads somewhere else. I uh, know, uh, uh, it's 0, 1. No, I'll put 0, 1, 0, 5. So here it's always growing because I'm forcing. And let's see. Uh, it's not growing, so here it's not proposing. Probably let me go here zero six. Okay, so see also, but uh, by default it's eight. So if you hover here, it will tell you what is the default value and what it's doing. So I like to use eighteen, generally speaking, which is equivalent to to an edge every twenty degrees of curvature, or thirty six, which is an edge every ten degrees. But most of the time, eighteen is okay. Then. Depending on the geometer, I can put there 18. Okay, so it's not showing that, but it doesn't matter. Okay, sometimes you would realize that you will see those those quads there. So let me go now back there, geometry. Let me select the edge there. Okay, and let me go here and put a, a large size there. So now it's a large aspect ratio. Okay, and let me put there 0 0.2. And look at what is going to happen there. 
So see that now very large aspect ratio there. So if you want to do the same with triangles to get this resolution, that is expensive. Also, if you put a triangle with this dimension here, you will see that that triangle, it will grow really fast, really about quality dimension. So this is the idea how you can control in these junctions there. You can add that manually and sometimes it will detect it automatically. So I really love these features and then, okay, you can grow your boundary layer in the usual way. By the way, not necessarily doing this, not necessarily will mean that your inflation layer is better. This is more focusing to fillets. You have Felix, those Felix, you need to put a lot of uh, elements in the surface to resolve it. If you're using triangles or poly or polyether. So the best way is to use high aspect quads, high aspect ratio quads to solve that. Okay, so later we're going to worry in another case, I'm going to show you specifically how it works, but you can get an idea there. So if you put there a fillet, it is much better to use that this approach to resolve that curvature. So see that following window, our mesh quality criterion, this is what, what we have. Okay, so we go to this impossible mesh, okay, that is it's impossible now to, to, to fulfill all the quality criteria. So using this third step approach is a racing sauce. So how do we control those mesh quality? So as you go here, meshing and see that here's where you have those options. Okay. So the most important one, just focus in this one, you can hover over and see a small description there. You have it, then this is it there, but this is the most important one that relates to this one. So here you can look and see that is relative good. So we have already zero two is very good. So let's see where do we have this cell. So put there. Okay. So see that are those cells. Let me select this one. Okay. Okay. So it will be all this group. Remember this image. So let's say that I don't, I want to fix my mesh in 0 0.5. This means that it's going to force. So this will be, you know, talking open from community, recall those mesh quality parameters that you enforce, excuse this and so on. This is equivalent to that. So if you put this, I mean, you need to have very good cells. So a lot of cells are going to be erased from your domain in order to fulfill this, this criteria. So let's go there, the surface mesh, and I click there. I put my cut plane there and there you go. Clearly you can see the difference. Okay. It is good or bad. I don't know. It's up to you to judge that, but see, we can get an idea here. For instance, here you, we didn't have elements, but it's clear that when you grow your volume mesh, you are going to have something in this dimension. So it will resolve that boundary layer. It's not the best element, okay, but you have it there, okay. Um, well, this is where also uh, Snappy tends to fail due to this keenness. Uh, recall that, and now you can relate that excuse it better to this quality, and uh, that's why it's always you no know, collide in the trailing edge. And if I go to quality, okay, and Okay, let me say this and this. So many cells, they, they are not generated. It's a little bit, it's, it's visually it's already we know that it's different, okay? So this is the idea how you control. Uh, I recommend you just to, to, to play with the, with the mean quality, okay? And use the default value 0 0.1 is, is, it's a good choice, it's the default choice. Okay, so let me do here, let me grow this again. Let me put this, let me, uh, well, I click again there, it, 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 the, uh, a smooth, it, a smooth the, the mesh. So this is what we have in this case, okay? So let me go and let me pa, 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 take, okay. An image there, yes. And let me run now with the auto reduction. Okay, so auto reduction will do the compression. Put it there. So usually, it sometimes can be better, sometimes it will be worse. 
Honestly, a step is the stair step method is better. Okay, B so they already see that it's different. So here it tries to grow everything, okay? So it will erase on cells, everything related you now to this mesh quality stuff but see that here you grow everything and then they collide this is something that you should avoid and see here that also in order to fulfill this criterion this quality criterion also instead of making it larger and larger they start to make it smaller and smaller okay so these are situations absolutely you should avoid okay so i gave you a few tips already but avoid as much as possible those situations disable that button there and for instance if i put here zero one Okay, let's see that likely it's going to grow more cells there. Okay, so. And to stress again, these quad cells in the surface, remember this is recommended to use when you have fillets, okay? This is not a solution to, to boundary layers, okay? Not, it's not related at all. And actually this is not a good approach in this case here, okay? So try to avoid it, but you can play with that, okay? It's, it's not like you're going to get errors or whatever, but it's not the, we're not using that, that technique in the right moment. Okay, so yeah, it didn't, yeah, it grew, it grew some more cells, but not much different. Okay, so I hope you have an idea about all, all these actions, okay? And just to end, and just to make things a little bit more complicated, because this is really easy here in the sense that we don't have one situation also when the boundary layer here intersect with another one in a right angle here. So let's grow also the boundary layer here and see that that situation is, if you think that maybe there are some problems here, that situation where they intersect, it is even more problematic and you will recognize immediately one problem that we see also in the meshes generated by a snappy hex mesh. So let's do that. Remember that the, I call this inlet two. I go here, I put inlet, I want to enable the there and let's do just eight, eight uh, inlet two volume, eight and global let, let's go back 0 0.5 this is okay uh let me close this mesh and let me select the geometry and let me disable all these parameters i don't need this option or you can leave it there is no problem uh put all triangles or select there remember and disable everything okay so just to show you two options uh, disable okay let's generate the mesh Okay, perfect. So now that we are adding also the other boundary layer here. Okay, I put it, okay. Yeah, uh, let's grow there. My cut plane there. And there you go. And probably immediately you will recognize what, what is the problem here. So see that when you are growing here, there is no problem. Well, here there is no problem, very smooth. Here you have the problem with this cuteness. And now here you have this problem when these boundary layers here are intersecting at, at a feature angle. And just wanted to use that word because it's the feature that you have also in, in that in, in snappy XM file. So see that here is where you start to have very bad quality cells. Okay, so if I put more cells and let me go to 12, Okay, the errors there are going to be more evident, which not, they are not a, a, a big problem because the mesh is still is acceptable. Okay, but be so that you start to see that things get bad and then in that region between all the layers that you need to put tetra or poly or excess, that probably is the worst cell that you can put there because they degenerate very fast, okay is where you're going to have the low, low quality. Okay, so this is our situation here. So according to our quality metric, erase cells according to that quality that puts zero one and you're filling the hole here. So this is the stair step method. 
So now let's do the same. Okay, so you can see that if, if these cells, they are not erasing, these Q's here will be really large. And then sometimes you are going, you, you are going to see one prop a propagation, a strength propagation here. And all cells needs to be a little bit anisotropic in order to, to align, to avoid you know, intersecting cells, zero volume cells. So it's an strange mesh. And this is what is happening. The method, the stair stepping is avoiding those cells just to force to have good quality mesh. So let's see. Okay, so we have something a little bit out of range. There are some cells out of range. So likely, let's see where where do we have those cells? Okay, here it's not in the region what I was expecting. Let's see this here. So also, you have it there. So actually, this excuses problems. They are not in there. So this is already good. So. We can evidence here that by removing those cells, that that excuse this problem. For instance, if we don't remove the cell here, probably likely, very likely, the excuse will be very large in those cells. But probably no orthogonality or orthogonality is large in some of those cells. So let's see. And actually, I suspect in there in those cells is that where you start to see large known orthogonality, but. 80 or 70 is still acceptable. Okay, so let's redo this now and let me show you now if you enable auto reduction, let's see what happens. Okay, it will try to grow the cells, but in this case, here is for sure that whatever you're going to, to, to get there is not better, it's not an improvement, it, it is likely worse. And And there you go. So see that now it might it forced to grow, but this visually we start to see that it's not very nice looking mesh. Okay, so all these cells are growing. Then here, when you grow your tetra mesh, you're going to see strange cells there. So let's go on that extra step. Let's do the tetra mesh. So the tetra, tetra um, pyramids, uh, those elements they adapt very easy to the geometry. So they are the best elements, let's say, to adapt. But to cover a volume, you will require way much cells. Okay. Instead, you do is you use poly poly. So uh, a general polyhedron is a uh, decomposition of tetra, and an exide also the decomposition. So previously I talked about, about that that the advantage of polyhedron that it can reduce the cell count by a factor between four and six. Excess between two and four. Okay. But excess they degenerate really fast when you have complicated geometry. And instead uh, tetra and poly they can adapt very easily okay and let me put here here and there you go okay so see there's a little bit strange there what is happening remember here i'm using the forcing the auction to align this uh, so similar to what people likes to see for instance using the snappy x mesh that everything is aligned see that here we can have the same effect okay with tetra and also with polyhedron. So, but see that what is happening here is this problem, and this is not nice. Even the the this, the, me, the the measure will will enforce some quality metrics, and this is okay. See that now we have many cells there that are not okay. Then you need to to evaluate there what is the maximum values or to, well, excuse this is it's okay, it's not a problem. So usually you can deal well with large values but if we look at here see that we start to get closer to to 90 degrees it might start to become a problem and just because we let that boundary layer grow okay so you have all the cells there okay so remember this value we have a lot of cells there and let's do now the conversion to polyhedron so polyhedron tends to adapt much better okay but not necessarily will be also an improvement, but generally speaking in my experience, it will tend to improve you know, the, the quality, but it's not a rule. So this step also is a little bit, depending on the number of cell, those cells that you have in the domain, may, may, may be a little bit time consuming now, because it's always, it is constructed, as you see, it's constructed from a, tetra mesh okay so if you have a very good tetra mesh likely that your 
poly mesh would be an improvement of that is you have a bad tetra mesh well it might happen that the poly will improve or it would make it worse and see here that you have the conversion taking place and let's wait a little bit okay at this point we have the poly mesh and let's take a look so this is my point that I was telling you that they adapt very very nicely to the surface like triangles instead as you put quads here you start to see quads they do not add that that nicely okay also look at that we are here that transition 1.2 everything perfect very very nice mesh okay here probably some problems well here we have now the boundary layer that is intersecting at a right angle but let's uh, look at the mesh okay these cells and we use again that uh that auction that will align the cells very very nice uh, look at here that now by using these cells visually i think it's much better than the tetra but it still is not it's not good but i think visually it is an improvement and let's see what happens here with orthogonality uh yeah no there are more back quality so if i recall pretty it was 54 something like that but yeah it says that there are more and likely everything will be in this in this region when you do this you have also this option that you can do a smoothing so when you are doing the mesh the, the, there is this booster let me repeat this booster option that is smoothing the mesh continuously but then you can run it at posteriori so you can do another booster and here you have the option that you can smooth the mesh okay so when you have the volume mesh you are, it's not going to work it's already fixed but you can freeze the boundary layer to say do not the smooth boundary layer because in the previous state I saw that it's good I don't want to do anything there okay and if I click here it's going to do just the volume okay so you can okay smooth and fail but you can see what it's trying to do okay let me erase that one let me also so in this case okay uh, also failed so it's not improving it cannot do any better the mesh okay but you can see what is happening okay so i hope you have an idea how it works as you can see it's much 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 easier and i can guarantee you that you can get good measures every time even with baffle that is so can be even tricky but you can get good measures all the time okay with a few entries here so i think we cover everything let me think if i'm missing something now because we're now we're addressing this advance it was just focused you now i wanted to focus on the in the boundary ledger uh next video will focus in local refinement i'll see that selecting here or selecting lines or adding the density box that i haven't talked about that so we can add local density so recapitulating so here you can set everything auto reduction i don't recommend ah oh, okay probably this is why we were getting also back quality not so good so let's redo and see just the tetra so i put a very low value there so remember to use the default values mention the default values they have been tested over time sorry the best value so we try to give to the user the less possible number of functions now you the only thing that you need to, to think about a good mesh and global parameters these parameters and then automatically it will manage to create meshes even it will it can create you know this prison in edges that like i show you okay and let me stop here because i'm generating also the prison so i forgot to so here you can stop your meshing okay so here if i fire up the all the steps boundary layer tetra prison so okay so let me go here and just surface mesh i have my nice surface mesh let me go here so for instance also you can let's you can take the to show you to remind remind you the lazy approach so nothing there erase this erase this and usually I like six, six cells there 
and that's all. You click there automatically using the characteristic X size in your surface mesh, it will grow your boundary layer. Okay, you don't think you don't need to think much and very nice perfect mesh is there. All the time, the first time you have you, I can guarantee you that. Okay, and then you can grow your prismatic mesh. So let me select only the prism. Uh, sorry, the, the tetra, your tetra mesh. The uh, steps that we saw, okay, including the edge, adding the prism in the edge, it is exactly the same as you use surface wrapping, okay? Nothing changed. Probably when you are doing surface wrappings, it means that you have a dirty STL and you don't have all the topological information at the surface level, okay? But the steps are exactly the same. Okay, nicely done. Okay, bam, 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 everything perfect. I don't need to go to an orthogonality. It should be very good, okay, as expected. Okay, and then if you want to compare, compare to poly, and just to point out and just to this fact that, look at that here, we have Rouse speaking, let's say half a million. If I put poly, probably can be 100,000, 80,000. Okay, let's see what happens when I put the poly. Okay. We have our poly mesh. Uh, let's put that have a cup there. There you go. Now, basically, I can say that this is, is mm, better than the previous one. The previous one where some strange shares that's there, but this is it. And if I go here just to check the cell count, doesn't matter. Okay, so see, as I mentioned, it was about a factor of four the reduction. So depending on the mesh, but poly will reduce your cell count a big bad benters. Then as you have more faces, your gradient computation is improved, at least in the final volume method. And also the changes that the face are going to be aligned with the flow are also larger. So you are going to reduce the uh, uh, truncation errors, not the case with tetra pyramids or excess, even excess. They're not as good as poly. So I think, I think I, I covered everything. Let me see if I forgot something, everything regarding you know, the boundary layer. So we visit all the advanced options. Okay, yes. Then here you have local settings. Remember that you can set up your boundary layer. These parameters are, are equivalent to this one. To open that window, you have here open parameters. If you decide to, to assign boundary layers here or whatever in, in your surface here, because you can also select surface and uh, assign those parameters. Always remember to apply boundary, boundary layer there. Okay, so you have same options. So expose here, you have it here. I prefer to work here. Sometimes probably it's better to work here when you have multiple volumes. Yeah, so I think this is all regarding to to boundary layer, how now you have a better under, understanding of what is happening, how to control it and over, but also what are the problems that are happening in, in, in Snappy that we cover here. So thanks for your attention and see you hopefully in our next last video using this case. Bye.